Hey everybody, today I'm going to take a look at the Konami Collector Series Arcade Advance Plug and Play. And as you can see, it has a large oversized joystick with a little red top. That's not a button, it's just a top. You have buttons, a circle button and square button on either side, so you can play this either handed. You have kind of your start button and a reset button here. The uh, power switch is in the back and you can see a little light up on the front when you light it up and it runs on three AA batteries has your RCA cables with your standard mono audio out the joystick itself you can see you have some nice artwork on the side including Jackie Chan not really and Frogger there on the side but it has these sharp edges so when you're holding it they can actually dig into your palm so that it's not too comfortable on that in that regard and the start button up here is kind of out of the way which I don't like. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and take the Arcade Advance plug and play. Let's plug it in my TV and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the games. The Konami Collector Series Arcade Advance plug and play was made by Majesco and carries a copyright year 2004. It is basically a port of the Game Boy Advance game of the same name that Majesco released two years earlier. The system contains six games based on Konami arcade games, but the games are not arcade ports, but rather they are either ports from the NES or Famicom or NES style versions of the game that never got released, leading me to believe that this plug and play is using NES on a chip technology. The first game is Frogger. This is a bare bones version of the game with one standard mode of difficulty, and the difficulty really shoots up after the first stage in my opinion, but it does control well and is fun to play. The second game is Scramble, the classic shooter where one button shoots straight ahead while the other drops bombs below. And just like in real life to refuel, you must bomb fuel containers. This was more fun than I expected it to be. The third game is Time Pilot. Here you hold down the button to continuously fire, trying to blow up a certain number of targets before the boss target appears. Defeat the boss target and you move on to a new time period. This was also more fun than expected, but like Frogger, the difficulty increases pretty fast. The fourth game is Gyrus. This fly around in a circle shooter is well made, but personally I've never been a big fan of Gyrus. The fifth game is GR Kung Fu, a very early Street Fighter game with very basic moves and a heavy focus on timing your attacks. This one cramped my hands and was not that fun to play. The sixth game is Russian Attack, or as I like to call it after watching Steve Benway play it a bit, stab you in the knees, since that describes your attack when you're on the ground. Here you knife opponents unless you are lucky enough to get a gun with limited shots. The game was mildly entertaining, but like many of the other games, the difficulty can ramp up pretty fast. Graphically speaking, and sound and music wise, if you are expecting arcade ports, you are most likely going to be disappointed with this, but for NES style games, the sounds and graphics do get the job done. Family friendly wise, on the Game Boy Advance, this game got an E for everyone rating, although the animated violence in two of the games could potentially make it an E10 and up rating for some. At the time I researched on eBay including shipping, used units were going for $15 to $32 and one new unit sold for $50. So what did I think of Arcade Advance? Well on the negative side, I do wish you had actual arcade ports and adjustable difficulty, and the joystick can be pretty uncomfortable to use. But on the plus side, at least the joystick is responsive and you can switch hands, which is what I did when my hands started to hurt. And while not all the titles were winners in my book, I did enjoy some of the games. So where am I going to rank Konami's Collector Series Arcade Advance Plug and Play? This is one of those middle of the road plug and plays that I wouldn't go out of my way for, but if I found it cheap I might pick it up and it can be a little bit of fun. I would rather play the classic arcade pinball plug and play at 17, but I will put this one over the Power Rangers SPD plug and play at 18. So out of the 30 plug and plays I've now ranked, the Konami Arcade Advance plug and play is Frogger hopping into the 18 position. The Konami Collector Series Arcade Advance plug and play may not offer true arcade style games, but it can still be fun. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also, please click like and subscribe and follow me both on the Facebook and the Twitter. I'm also a member of the Retro Junkies Network. At this time, I'd like to thank all of my extraordinary Patreon supporters, including Rick. Thanks, Rick. If you appreciate the work I do and enjoy my videos, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter by signing up at patreon.com slash nosewaregamer starting at a single dollar a month. Not only will you help make videos like this possible, but you will also gain access to some exclusive content. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care, everybody.